Hello and welcome to our one versus one between Albert Einstein playing as human versus sexy time as night elf on the map Twisted Meadows. This is a GBR one versus one. Albert's going for a very fast build here on the Altar of Kings. It's, it is the correct thing to do on this map as a human player because human players do like to do the Goblin Laboratory because it gives them basically level two and a half and a very nice item, potentially. We'll find out later on what that item is. Meanwhile, we can see that Sexy Time has spawned at the bottom right, so fairly close um, spawns. This map is pretty forgiving. It takes a little while to get to your enemy, but not that long. I think it's a really good map overall, although cross map is a little less forgiving. But close up, it could be really good, but not as good as you think it might be for Sexy Time. He would be far better off spawning in the equally close position, top left. But... This would be slightly closer because the first thing Albert is going to do with this Archmage is bring a footman and, you know, six or so militia and come and creep this goblin laboratory over here. So if Sexy Time spawn at the top left, it means that his Demon Hunter, well, let's find out if it is. We won't know. It's going to... Hmm. It looks like he might be going neutral hero then. Okay. That could work either way, potentially, because the hero's coming from the middle. So there is no quickest spawn point. But if you were going to build a demon hunter and you were going to be at the top left, you are going to have the quickest path from the top left to this goblin laboratory right over here. But because the hero's coming from the middle, kind of makes it almost a little bit quicker, actually. A tiny bit quicker, actually, to reach this goblin laboratory. So, um, I'm curious to see what the hero is going to be. I'm guessing a panda, but it could be a Beastmaster as well. Beastmaster would be a good way to pick off injured militia. That will no doubt get a little bit battered. Albert's doing the correct thing here. He's got a good nail down on that mud golem. It gets the slow out of the way, so you don't have to worry about slow being recast over and over. But your next water elemental, what you really should do is try to get as close as you can to this rock golem, and then spawn your water elemental. So it spawns next to the rock golem, which means that, oh well... Belt of Giant Strength, not so good for the Archmage, but potentially good for the Mountain King later on. Wisp coming in to scout here, and Tome of Experience picked up for Albert, so he's going to definitely get a lot of experience. He's going to deny this Wisp from detonating on these Water, Elemental, and Archmage. It does look like Beastmaster's coming in, though, and I'm assuming that Quill Beast is going to be used at some point. Is there a Quill Beast anywhere? Where's the Quill Beast? Maybe it might be a bear. I don't know, but Albert's finishing off this creep camp. It looks like Albert's got himself level two and a half and a little bit. Tome of Experience only gives Gives you a hundred experience now I believe. Quills now coming in they can slip inside of the little blocks that the uh, humans can create from farms and other buildings so it means he's going to have relatively easy access to injured peons or peasants inside especially these two but this Quill, <laughs> Quill Beast is having a bit of a bad time and he's going to give Albert a little bit more experience. Not that much 30 or so but it's still a little bit more so we can see that sexy time is sitting at just slightly underneath a uh, level, well, halfway through to level two, and another Quill Beast is trying to slip through into the base. Albert just wants to sort of see what he can get away with here with this Quill Beast. Should be able to get himself possibly one more kill, but it does look like he's going to be denied here. The Quill Beast cannot take too many hits at level one. Footmen do additional damage because the Quill Beast has zero armor, and that's zero armor on medium armor, which takes additional damage from normal attacks, which are what footmen have. And we can see that there actually has been a footman this entire time, just basically wailing on a moon well, which has kind of brought Sexy Time back into his own base. He's got Huntresses, by the looks of it, coming out now from the Ancient of War. Double Ancient of War, that is. So he's going to build up for some real strong early pressure and go from there. Meanwhile, Albert almost seems somewhat prepared for this however they aren't guard towers they are arcane towers so they will be useful against um, the beastmaster if he gets too close to drain away his magic or mana and at least do a little bit of additional damage to summons such as quill beasts Albert's got a decent chunk of footmen here, five. He'll be okay for the moment, but as soon as more and more Huntresses start to plow into this base, he's going to have a much harder time because Huntresses can take out footmen a lot easier than footmen can take out Huntresses. This is good micro so far from Albert, basically retreating any units, denying experience for sexy time as they will sit inside of the base. But that's why sexy time still is aware of this, and he's bringing in that Quill Beast. 
to try to pick off any injured units because it can slip into that human base as seen before. At least the Arcane Towers might be able to deny this footman kill just about there. Beastmaster is returning back to base because of a pesky footman. And we've got Ancient of Wonders. No tech so far for Sexy Time. I can only assume that Albert has got his tech underway. He's going towards Tier 2. He's getting a Blacksmith now, so he's going to be switching towards Rifles, most likely. I don't think he's going to focus too heavily on Rifles. As long as he can get Arcane Sanctums up and start moving towards that Tier 2 strength that Human has with Casters, slow. He should be able to put up quite a decent fight versus his Huntresses. So, Sexy Time's now going to take advantage of his small collection of Huntresses and his Ancient of War nearby and try to creep. I don't know whether he's going to continue creeping after this camp, but I almost suggest that maybe he should. He can always try to push his luck against Albert and see what he can get away with inside of Albert's base, but generally he might be better off using this collection of Huntresses to creep as much as he can early on because they are very good for creeping. Albert's army less so for creeping. He won't be able to take on the stronger spots quite so easily, whereas Sexy Time can pretty much blast through them because of the Huntress's Glaives, and they're just decent-ish units, at least early on in the game. And a Forest Troll Berserker, a very decent, strong unit. Quite a reasonable price, one of the better units from a mercenary camp. It looks like a good creep jack here from Sexy Time. Perfect timing. That Water Elemental is going to have a bad time. Level 3 Archmage just about, and level 2.5 Beastmaster, so it's caught up already just from a little bit of extra creeping. Does look like Sexy Time is now going to be able to take this creep camp for free, and I don't think Albert's going to be able to put up much of a fight whatsoever. He's going to retreat to base, possibly get Clarity Pots for his Archmage so he can bring out the Water Elementals, because Water Elementals are a strong part of the human army. Well... Only if you get Archmage. If you don't get Archmage, you're not going to get Water Elementals. But they are very useful versus Huntresses because they have piercing type attacks. And Huntresses have um, very low armor-ish. But it, the main thing is they have unarmored. So they take quite a lot of extra damage from piercing units such as Riflemen and Water Elementals. Now, Albert's really going ahead on the towers here. But he can actually stand his ground here because he is sitting by a shop and he's got the comfort and it won't be too long until he can get another water elemental out and Huntresses, they do take quite a lot of damage when they do get focused but Sexy Time is actually making the moment here to actually allow his Quill Beasts to... well, they're tier 2 they're level 2 Quill queer be Beasts Queer Beasts? <laughs> you don't want to get attacked by those unless you're into that sort of thing, I guess so we've got Quill Beasts yeah, that's right. I said it. Quill Beasts. I got it right that time. And uh, yeah, they're going to town, especially when they can bloodlust themselves. It looks like... Ow, ow, sexy Times used a scroll of teleport. That's a somewhat expensive way to get out there. Probably a little unnecessary. Albert's held his own there, so he's done a pretty good job there overall. Level 3, almost level 4 for Sexy Time. And the Archmage is now slightly behind in terms of experience. Total gain, that is. We might want to see a Mountain King soon. Arcane Sanctum is being speed built. So we've got three peasants on that. Hopefully going to see Sorks. They'll soon get countered by a Dryads, potentially from the two Ancients of Lore that are coming out. Sexy Time has a rather greedy-ish build. Two Ancients of War, two Ancients of Lore, no expansion, and very injured Huntresses. A scroll of healing would go a long way. These moon wells at least help quite a bit to help those Huntresses get back into the fight. But he can't afford to take big damage on those Huntresses again. Otherwise he won't have much sort of um, longevity to his army. Naga Sea Bitch coming in here for Albert. Second hero. I assume Frost Arrows has been selected. I can only assume. And an Ogre Mauler has been selected for Sexy Time from the Mercenary Camp. It's a pretty decent unit overall. I can't really argue with the Ogre Mauler. I don't have any complaints about it. I don't think it's anything amazingly special, but at the same time, it's just always there. It's hard to kill. It just blocks, you know, it just gets in the way. It's more of a tank, and it does its job as a tank. So you can't really argue with that performance. Beastmaster now full on mana from the Mac, uh, Clarity Potion. Albert's coming in here for an expansion clear. I don't think he's going to take the expansion, but he's... Oh, he is. Okay, Militia are coming in. This is going to be somewhat risky because he's going to be expanding potentially towards his enemy base. I don't think he's going to fully go through with this. He'd almost be tempted to TP out if he actually had a TP. So he's going to have to put up a damn good fight here, otherwise the game could be over already. 
Tinker has been made the second hero choice for Sexy Time, and he's going to prove an annoyance with his Pocket Factory, which is almost dead, but hasn't quite been taken out. Priests are coming in here. Sorks are here now, but they're casting slows on the wrong units. It looks like Albert's a little bit flustered. This is basically the worst case scenario for Albert. You do not want your militia here getting all picked off. Looks like uh, Naga Sea Bitch leveling up to two, but I'm not sure that's going to be necessarily enough. Huntresses are being taken out, but Dryads are now coming in. That's going to provide a little bit of slow here, allowing Sexy Time to potentially pick off units should he choose to use the Dryad to the biggest effect. The Dryad has been saved there with the Staff of Preservation that you can see here on the cooldown used on the Beastmaster. So that was a nice little touch there because that Dryad was definitely going to go down. That was a good pickup from Albert trying to take her out because she would have allowed extra experience for Sexy Time because he would have been able to pick off units. But unfortunately for Albert, Staff of Preservation exists and it does look like two peasants here see what's coming up the ramp and decide to run back which is the smart decision and it does look like the Archmage is in a bit of a tricky position manages to weave his way out here <laughs> okay scout towers just not really going to be able to do much here other than provide some sort of temporary block but it does look like Albert is really in trouble here there's lots of summons here for sexy time none of them are being dealt with right now the priest is only initiate he couldn't even dispel and even if he could it's going to cost too much mana which he just won't have because it's going to be spent healing healing like mad now it does look like Albert's somewhat still slightly, ever so slightly in this, but it's still tricky. It depends what he can buy and what he won't lose. He can't really afford to lose any more units, including that rifleman that just died. Because Sexy Time, whilst he is a little bit more injured, he's still got enough strength, army-wise, to sit here and continue sieging potentially this base. Will we see another save? We do not. It does look like the Staff of Preservation is still on cooldown. At least it has a bit of a cooldown, but he could potentially save the next unit. So it might be in his interest to allow Albert to think that he can bring down the Ogre Mauler, let him tank on the damage, and then save it. Although it might be choose, it's definitely probably going to be used on this Tinker in a moment. It does. Tinker can now return back to base, heal up with the Moon Wells, and return to the battle. Ogre Mauler going on nuts on this Archmage, now running back a little bit. It does look like 60 times being pushed back a little bit, but I don't think he's necessarily going to run back completely. He's going to wait for the Tinker to come back, and then maybe creep. He can't do too much more damage, but I feel like the damage has been done here a little bit because Albert doesn't have an expansion and humans, they do depend on expansions quite strongly and it does look like Sexy Time might be going for an expansion here himself. That's a very cheeky expansion, but there are no others for him to take because they haven't been cleared yet. We've got Beastmaster almost at level 5 now. Oh! Oh, a bit of rage there. Oh, a bit of a temperament. Well, there it is. Okay, so it looks like Sexy Time takes that game. Bad manners from Sexy Time refusing to stay paused in the game. Bad blood there, I think. Bad blood there. Well, I'm not even sure if we're going to get another game. Oh, I'm... I'm I'm curious. I'd like to commentate another game, but I'm not sure if we're going to get one. If we don't, I'll sign it off now. But if we do, then I'll just cut to the next video at this point. If not, then thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you later. Take care. Hey there. This is game two, except it's going to be Sexy Time versus Rayed. Undead versus Orc on Echo Isles. Albert's taking a timeout. He's timing out right now. You might call it Rage? You might call it anger, you might call it despair, you might call it suffering. You're going to call it something, but at the end of the day, he ain't playing. That's the point. But he might play after this game. He just wants a bit of a breather by the looks of it. A bit of rage going down. So we can see Sexy Time is the undead player here with the crypt all out in the front there. A cocky crypt if ever I saw. And there's a graveyard. So... Hmm, I'm thinking maybe he might go fiends. Just, just a guess. I can't say for sure. We're going to find out later. Oh wow, this is a real cocky build. What's up with all these buildings everywhere? He just doesn't care. So inside of Rayard's base, we've got a barracks coming up. So I'm assuming a grunt or two. Sitting at the 9 food. Boom! Onto 10 food. Just like that. Peon coming out to have a little scout. The hero is going to be Blade Master. What are you going to see, Peon? He's going to come back with some stories to tell. 
And we're going to see a cigar art built for sexy time. Yep. And maybe a ghoul. It's like... I don't know how I managed to predict these things. I, I think it's a special skill. Oh, Time of Relics. I didn't see that one coming. Right. <laughs> this peon is now halfway across the map and he's getting bolder. The closer he gets to an undead base, it must be pretty scary walking to an undead base, especially when you're a crappy peon. Look at him. He's so scared. Well, actually, you can't see his portrait, but he was just going like this. You can see, just see my face. So you can just imagine, imagine him doing that. Just as I was saying that, that's exactly what he was doing on the portrait. What's the matter, peon? Don't like what you see? <laughs> so we got Tomer Relics almost finished. Death Knight, what a surprise. Fiend's coming out. The good old 17 food. Bring out the fiend. Another fiend. This cigarette should, cigarette should be up. 20 food. Then you move on to 20 out of 30 and you can keep on pumping out fiends or tech. Choice is yours, really. We've got um, mm, Foodoo Lounge in the middle. I quite like that. Raid's coming in here to steal the Ogre Warrior. And this is going to be a guaranteed steal because there's no way that Death Knight's coming out. So that's a really nice touch. I like this. He's very active here. Oh, will the Fiend get the last hit? This is going to be tricky. No. In fact, that's kind of worked in Raid's advantage. He can get a few cheeky hits on the Fiend. The Fiend is going to be focused here by the Forest, forest Troll Trappers. Don't ask me why, but it's just the way the AI works. The AI will pretty much go for the person that turns up second, rather than the person that initiated the initial attack. So he's going to blow through a couple of potential uh, coils here. So he's going to waste sexy times of mana here. And then the Blade Master can just return back to base. Oh, <laughs> these trappers are pissed. Look at them. So he's going to return back to the middle. This food lounge is going to be finished. He's going to pick himself up a healing salve and start healing. Two grunts moving towards sexy times base whilst Rayard's text. And he's got a third grunt on the way. Sexy Times at least got a good way to kill these troll trappers. Oh, these troll trappers are going to town. This is why you just don't get close to those buggers. Because this is going to be unwanted damage that Raid's taking. But it does look like Sexy uh, Times is going to take a little bit of extra damage there. And he's fiend. He's going to lose this grunt. That's a nice around there. Well, almost definitely lose this grunt. Yeah, there's no way that grunt's getting out. And there's no way to deny the experience. Because Raid isn't close enough to kill that grunt. Blade Master slightly less experience, gaining it though by killing these skeleton warriors. He's going to go back into the fiend. Always put pressure on the fiend when possible. Always be careful with the grunt though. Careful of everything. There is a dust of appearance, so it is potentially possible that Sexy Time could indeed coil and get the kill. He didn't even need to use dust of appearance. It's a little bit unfortunate Red spent just a little bit too long there. If he just got back, he probably would have been able to survive in like a cheeky one health or something like that. Because you don't take a full on 100 damage from a coil if you've got hero armor, which heroes tend to have. They actually take 70% damage from spells. So if you got coiled for 100 potential damage, as the spell would say, you're actually going to only take 70 damage off that on your hero. Blade Master's out already, so did he pick this up from the ta tavern? That's an expensive choice, but nonetheless, he's going for it. He has got the option to bring the Blade Master back up to healthy status with clarity pots and healing cells from the Foodoo Lounge in the middle. He's picking himself up some nice items. Gloves of Haste, Claws of Attack plus six, twice, and Boots of Speed, and he's hopefully going to get a really nice item from the Ogre Magi here. Blade Master will easily be able to clear this, and he has got a wind walk to get out of this situation. What's it going to be? Potion of Greater Mana. Yeah, he sold it. He just went straight out and sold it, and he can actually slip out there. He didn't even need to use wind walk, which is nice. That's good. Sexy Times going for a creep here. He should be able to, yep, nodge his way up to level 3. Claws of Attack plus 9. That will sit nicely on the Lich, which is inevitably going to be built once Tier 2 has been reached for Sexy Time. Blade Master coming in here. Gets to keep his healing self just for a split second. Oh my days. Dust of Appearance is used. So that is one endangered, endangered Blade Master. Whew. Harsh. Really pushing his luck there. You do not want to be doing that too much against the Death Knight. That can just chuck out a cheeky coil and he's done the job. Yes. Coil is a nasty piece of work. Is he going to get his Blade Master again from the tavern? I don't know. 
These grunts, I assume, have been creeping meanwhile. But I don't see any creep camps that have been cleared. They're all still green. So I'm not entirely certain of how much they might have cleared. If any. So is he waiting to get the Blade Master out? Resources are low. It's not coming out from the altar. It does look like a GG. That was one too many hero losses. Pushed his luck. He was doing well. He just didn't want to suffer losing the Blade Master twice. Otherwise, he could have still stayed in the game. Oh, well. Oh, well. All right. Echo Isles is back once again. And it's going to produce a game of Sexy Time as Night Elf versus Albert Einstein as Human. And that looks like an altar to me. So, I am... Um, Wedging my bets that it's going to be a warden. I was going to say Demon Hunter. It's a small enough map for Demon Hunter to be incredibly effective. But I might suspect warden play because that's also incredibly strong versus human. But you need to know a bit more how to get the most out of warden, really. You need to harass a lot and take no damage. It's kind of similar to the Demon Hunter, except the warden I feel is a much more risky hero. But, with great risk comes great reward. The Demon Hunter is your real solid, can't go too far wrong hero as Night Elf. And you should almost always pick him. He's pretty much like the Death Knight for Undead, but not quite as extremely strong. I mean, you don't ever see Undead basically pick anything other than Death Knight first in, you know, competitive games, in proper high-level games. It is Warden, so Sexy Time is going to go for the risk. And the Wisp is on its way to find a tree to hide or hug. I assume hug first and then hide in shame afterwards. Now we got an Archmage for Albert and he's blocked off this base. Footman coming out and peasants, wouldn't you know. A little late on the farm there. He's going to be a little capped here. Oh my god, this is going to be like four seconds of cap. That's crazy. Those peasant is That peasant is dying to get out. Just dying. Oh, Footman might have spotted the wisp here. And it has. Wisp denied. <laughs> Am I a tryhard? I never considered myself that much of a tryhard. Maybe in one versus one I'm a bit more of a tryhard. But uh, yeah, the wisp is being chased here by the footman and it doesn't know exactly where it's going but anywhere away from the footman would be a good choice so we've got the warden coming straight in here archmage coming to creep up the ogre warrior it wants to be quick on picking up the item because the warden will nab it otherwise ring of protection plus two it's all right Warden's going to slip in here, see if it can shadow strike something. He's probably going to get a kill on the water elemental in a moment. Oh, I think denied slightly on the water elemental. But it, she did get the troll trapper. Meanwhile, this wisp is having this dance around with that footman. I'm keeping an eye on the minimap for it. I'll let you know the wisp dies. But we've got the... Uh, <laughs> just watching both at the same time. Oh, I think the wisp did die. Yes, because I don't see it anywhere, so it either died or it detonated. Meanwhile, we've got this Archmage being constantly harassed by the Warden, but the Warden is taking pretty much just as much damage as the Archmage is. So that's a good trade-off for Albert, as long as he can sort of stay on level peggings with the Warden, but preferably a little bit higher. Footman's going to have a rough time against an Ancient of War just sitting there, that's for sure. So Warden is now coming down, Archmage is running around, probably going to look to pick up a boost of speed, is what I would definitely do, just to try and evade that Warden. Warden for as long as possible. Keep being researched. Militia have finished off this creep camp, so Albert gets to steal that experience. He's going to play it risky by the looks of it and go for a creep here, but he's going to get spotted because the Warden's going to see Footman coming down here. Now, could I ever assume that they were looking for the Warden or they were coming to creep? But either way, it's not really safe for Albert to creep, and he's going to miss out on a boots of speed because Sexy Time is most likely going to pick those up now. Oh, goes for Staff of Teleportation instead of Booster Speed. Warden is pretty nifty. So where did he teleport to? Ah, back to base. Healed up with Moonwells. Huntress is coming out. Tech to Tier 2 now. About 30% of the way through. Albert did want to creep this spot here. And he might follow through. He has crept over here as well. So that's good. He's making the most of that out of these militia. But 
I don't think he can necessarily... Ch he's going to have to make a choice. He can go for an expansion, but he's going to have no wood. Or he can make the most out of Tier 2 once it's available and get a Hero and an Arcane Sanctum. It looks like Huntress is sitting pretty on Slow and Lightning Shield. Pretty annoying there from Mr. Renegade Wizard. Troll Berserker being picked up for sexy time. Ring of Protection seems to be the flavor of the day. Everyone's getting one. Sexy Time's got a plus three one. Albert is going to clear this camp, but I don't see Militia coming along. Arcane Vault, tier two has been achieved. Expect to see uh, Arcane Sanctum in a moment. Let's see what this Ogre Magi is going to drop. Meanwhile, Sexy Time coming to creep his own expansion spot as well. Ancient of War, going to get in there, maybe do a little bit of tanking. There is no Tree of Life, though, being built just yet, but we'll keep an eye on that. I don't know whether it will get built. Claws of Attack plus six. Does look like Arcane Sanctum has been chosen. Mount King as the second hero. Another footman just to bolster up the army a little bit. Sexy time. Continuing to clear out this creep camp. Doesn't look like the Engine of War was particularly needed. Too slow to even get there. Troll Priest has been picked up by the Sexy Time at the Mercenary Camp. <laughs> Warden getting slightly uh, blocked by the Raccoon there. I like that. It's almost like it was deliberate. If it was a human critter, it might be, which is uh, a purchasable item from the Arcane Vault. And I guess healing's going to go down for these footies right here. They're going to want it because here comes a panda. Now Sexy Time might choose to creep this spot out. He could easily creep it. And panda is just a very solid hero against human. At least at the start, even then later on, because he's good against the footman, and then once human transitions into casters, the panda wants to get into the back and try to hit those casters as much as possible with Breath of Fire and possibly Drunken Haze to go with it. But some players who choose panda might not get the breath of um, the Drunken Haze, just so they can have more Breath of Fires and get the passive for panda, which is actually pretty good. It's underestimated. It's basically like a, a crit and evasion, sort of a slightly reduced version of both combined into one. That doesn't actually sound that good, but trust me, it is actually pretty good on that hero. It just gives him a little bit more survivability, and he is basically the tank for the Night Elf. And we've got Warden here harassing up at the top, denying another Arcane Sanctum. That's pretty annoying. It does look like the Peasant might get away. There is a level 2 Shadow Strike, but it's not enough to kill a Peasant straight off. Oh, he's going to lose this actual Arcane Sanctum unless he can get it. He's gonna, definitely going to lose it, but it might mean that Albert gets to pick up a free kill here. So it's like a trade-off. He has to cancel that Arcane Sanctum, which is a bit unfortunate, but at least he got a hunt for it. He got something for it. Now we've got Ancients of Law being built. One's already up, and it looks like the wood is being saved up, maybe for a tech first, and then research or units from the Ancients of Law. Footman looking for an expansion doesn't quite spot the wisp that goes into place here on the tree potentially going to be placing down an expansion but I don't think so because night elf are very um, wood heavy which is why I tend to get shredders almost all the time when I'm night elf oh warden pushing our luck a little bit if there was a bash proc which there couldn't possibly be because that is a level 1 mountain king but if it's a level 2 plus you might expect a potential bash which could interrupt the staff of teleportation with the warden but not this time she's going to get back to base and as I was saying night elf a very wood uh, heavy dependent race so he has gone for the tree of life it's doable but it means that he's not going to be able to take to tier 3 just yet and he, he's going to be a little bit slow to get the bears out and dryads but in the long run this will pay off for him if he gets to keep the tree of life but for the short term he's just going to be a little bit slow on being able to use these ancients of law in in the first place he has gone for tier 3 tech first before even building units so preemptively these ancients of law were a little uh built a little bit early but I guess these were just decisions made on the sly. Sexy time finishing off this creep camp whilst the panda is just dancing around up at the top picking up a staff of preservation very good item to have you've got to get yourself one as a night elf player ancient of war potentially moving up to here because it looks like sexy times expecting Albert to get himself an expansion and he'd be probably right in expecting that. Gonna pick up a scroll of healing going to give him a little bit more sort of uh, longevity into the fight that's about to happen. However, he hasn't got many units that will benefit from the scroll of healing, so it's somewhat expensive, but it's still an incredibly useful item and should almost always be picked up. Fock being used here. 
So I don't think there has been blink research then. Because I really doubt that Toma retraining was used. Slow. Pretty much going to guarantee a Hunter's Kill unless Staff of Preservation was used or Abolish Magic from the Troll Shadow Priest. But Staff of Preservation, definitely your number one priority to save a unit in that situation. Mountain King coming up here, he's still got two good old bolts left in him. So he's going to use it to pick off the Troll Shadow Priest with no problems whatsoever. But the Mountain King is in a lot of trouble, almost definitely going to go down here. Does look like we've got a couple of Spellbreakers trying to put some pain onto the Huntress, but they're taking pain themselves. They're not actually that strong. I mean, they can take a hell of a lot of damage from the Engine of War, which is pretty much what's happening. Watch the health. Huge chunks of health coming out. 45 to 55 damage on basically medium armor from normal damage is going to equate to a lot of damage, basically about 70 to 80 per hit, which is a hell of a lot to take, you know unnecessary damage taken. So we've got two Arcane Sanctums back for Albert, still sitting at tier 2. Expansion is now finished. Also for Sexy Time, his expansion is finished. It actually looks like Albert gets to keep his expansion first, because Sexy Time has still got to entangle this gold mine and get the Wisps to go inside of it. So Albert's still in the game. Does look like bears are coming out. Tier 3 almost about to go down. Moonwell, Dryad's coming out. Lots of wood, so a guaranteed research into bears so druid of the claw master training not too long until we see this happy little fella turn into a big happy little fella a big little happy fella oh, i guess he could still be that hey why not it's warcraft 3 anything ha anything can happen so it does look like albert is a little bit underpowered here if i was going to be honest he needs the mountain king back at the very least he needs to just flat out run away pull any militia although he's going to be scrapped for wood if he does this. He's got a few more spell breakers to join his army though, so this actually makes it a little bit more even. 51 food versus 48, so it's a bit more even, but now Mountain King is coming in. Definitely needs this. Could potentially take out the bear very quickly, or at least force the staff of preservation with focus and stuff. Oh no, not quite. It does look like Albert's taking way too much damage at this point. Fock proving to be a very useful ability here, especially versus the casters. And the warden on level 4, panda level 3, Albert level 3, and Archmage and I assume level 2 on the Mountain King. Teleport back into the expansion, not entirely sure if that was deliberate. But either way, it is some way to get out of the battle. This is a good little storm battle here. Arcane Tower going up just in time. That was a greater mana potion, I believe, used there by Sexy Time to allow himself to get one more fuck out before... <laughs> to fuck him up before TPing out. So, uh, Warden now picking up another Orb of Phenom. Well, another one, just one. And a Staff of Preservation for each hero. So there's lots of potential here for saving units here. And potentially denying experience for Albert. Spellbreakers are not graded at the moment. More Spellbreakers coming out and then Priests to follow. Albert does have this expansion going for him. I know Sexy Time has one as well. But this is the main thing. If Albert can find a way to secure this expansion and then be brave enough to go out creeping so that Sexy Time doesn't get all the experience on the map, then uh, he'll be in a good spot. Now this is sometimes one of the moments where you might pull one of your heroes back. For example, pull the Warden back so the Panda gets more experience. But really, the Warden is such an effective hero against human that it might be more interesting or worthwhile to actually pull back the lower level hero and allow the Warden to reach level 5 just so she can get level 3 Fock. So we've got Berserkers, we've got three Dryads, three Bears, two Huntresses, a good solid army. Doesn't look like anything is upgraded here for Sexy Time. Ah, oh, I thought he might pick up a couple of Scroll of Healings. I knew he'd pick up at least one, but two is going to really help out with this army. It's just going to mean that he can basically put up a long fight here. But the Guard Towers are up at least. There is no Masonry upgrade. Sexy Time's now coming up here instead of going straight to the expansion. So he's going to probably force an ex a TP or at least get Albert a little bit flustered because Albert's been expecting an attack here. He's waiting for it. Mortar's now coming out. This is a good touch. 
which is what you need versus Night Elf, but it's very hard to not allow those mortars to die, and you've got to keep them at the back so that they can focus the dryads and do splash damage, but I'm not even sure if splash damage is available for these mortars yet. We'll kind of pay attention to the animation that hits on the dryads if Albert uses them. Lots of Moonwell juice here, by the way, so Sexy Dun does have to get back. After using all of those scroller healings as well, he's going to have so much sort of healing to go all around. Good AoE there from Sexy Time. He's now sitting here. Scroller healing being used. Raw being used by the Druid of the Core. Lots of militia coming in, flanking in from behind. Does look like Sexy Time might have to save a couple of bears. That scroller healing is going to be on a little bit of a cooldown, but he does manage to use it in time, so it's quite quick, the cooldown. Warden taking quite a bit of focus. Mountain King chasing. Warden falling back. Does look like, uh, well, Albert's doing okay. He's still got a lot of casters. He's got a lot of spell breakers. Staff preservation being used. Warden now using the TP. This is actually a pretty successful defense here. Does look like that is splash damage there. Potentially mortar fragments from the mortar team. So Albert's actually on 53 food here versus 65 food. It doesn't sound like Albert's got such a strong army, but he actually held his own there, and that wasn't too bad, because that's two scrolls of healing, that's 500 gold used for sexy time, and the TP to get back. 350 gold, so 850 gold, whacked right there. So, not a bad defense for Albert whatsoever. He's managing to stand his ground. This is a nice sentry ward here from sexy time, gives him a bit more of an sort of a vision advantage and allows him to know when Albert is moving out. He's also got a sneaky wisp around here to see if Albert's going to try to creep this kip, this camp, or at least to save it or for any shenanigans later on. Albert's moving to the shop. He's got a good item on the Mountain King, Prept of Vitality, and a lesser invulnerability pop, which means that the Mountain King won't die straight away, which is always good. But unfortunately, Albert didn't secure many kills in the battle that they had, so he's still only got a level 3 Archmage and a level 2 Mountain King. So we've got level 4 Sexy Time Warden, that's almost level 5, and a level 4 Panda. Much stronger heroes. Again, a stronger army, generally overall, but Albert's still got the right good mix here. And this is definitely going to force a TP. And Albert could sit on this, definitely kill it, and then TP out. That would be his best bet. But he's going to actually let that go. It's going to take a lot of damage and then probably end up TP in afterwards, which isn't going to be worth his time. Now, don't get me wrong. He was going to get screwed there no matter what because of the position that Sexy Time TP'd in. But I think he probably had the potential to take out that expansion. Or at least if he moved the mortars. The first moment he saw the TP going down up here. Predicting that Sexy Time was going to TP to closest to those mortars. And then he could take out the expansion and TP out. That would give him a bit more of an opportunity to stay in the game. Because he'd then only have to concentrate on defending. Whilst building up a strong enough army that could potentially siege down the Night Elf army. Before it can even get close. And mortars will allow that to happen. But you need enough of them and you need enough of a block. In fact it would be nice to see some knights. But Albert is pretty much stuck at tier 2 here. Because he's just not got the resources or the capability to go to tier 3 at this point. He has to keep building units to stay in the game. If he takes to tier 3, the game might be over before he can even get knights. Warden doesn't want the circlet of nobility anymore. Gives it to the panda, who's also got himself an anti-magic potion. It'd be good if he could predict when he's going to get storm bolted so he can save himself from the stun, the damage, and waste the mana from the Mountain King. Guard Tower's only just starting to go up, so they ain't going to get anywhere. A lot of bears here. Five bears. Good mix of dryads. Troll berserkers. Still the huntresses in the game. Fairy dragon's going to be useful. Sitting at the back here, no doubt. Wherever the casters go, the fairy dragons are going to follow. And they're going to get in there and activate their mana flare ability. Which is going to screw over all of Albert's casters. This is very hard counter for Albert. As you can see, any spell cast will allow you to take damage from the sexy, sexy fairy dragons. God, they're so sexy. They're so talented. They're so good. And they're getting back in there, and it won't be too long until they can do their thing again. It's actually got a relatively short cooldown. Yes, it does look like level 5 Warden and 4 Panda, who's almost level 5. The hero's strength is just too much here. The army is just too much here. Albert did hold on quite well, considering he could have lost this quite a bit earlier, but I think... Sexy Time didn't really slip up, which is what Albert needed him to do. 
The only slight slip up was the attack earlier in the base where Sexy Time wasn't particularly successful in killing anything, but neither was Albert. It was more of a sort of draw, if anything. And a draw where Sexy Time was still the stronger player in terms of heroes and units is not a good draw for Albert. And he is trying to put some... Ah, oh, that Warden's got 300 odd mana. Even so now, 230 mana. That's a good couple of Fox and then some. And also, don't forget, Potion of Mana to go with that. So that Warden is just consistently throwing down damage, whether it be from her Orb of Venom, her auto attacks, or just the sheer amount of spells she can cast in these pretty long fights because the bears allow uh, Sexy Time to stay in the fight for a long time because they're just strong, solid units. It keeps the fight going. Albert's only really got spell breakers, which can be effective against bears, but also not so effective against bears because they take extra damage from the bears. It, they kind of counter each other in a sort of way, but I would give, obviously, a little bit more leeway towards the bears since they are stronger melee and the Archmage does go down. And only the Mountain King still at level 2 here, not able to really <laughs> defend and the uh, sort of the cast is lagging a little bit behind getting hit very heavily by the breath of fire drunken haze combination and sexy time is going to heal up his army as though it was good as new 72 food lots of gold enough wood to go around meanwhile albert 52 food just scraping by for gold this expansion untouched relatively for sexy time it's not good Arcane Sanctum going down, only one Arcane Sanctum left. Albert has one last ditch attempt to come back here, but against the heroes that Sexy Time has, I would wager him having almost no chance whatsoever, unless Sexy Time just disconnects. But the mana dra uh, fairy dragons rather are coming in, they do like their mana. Oh, you can see they love their mana so much, look at that, they love it. Albert is TPing back. But where to? His expansion. Either place he TPs to is never going to work anyway because there's just pretty much no way he can beat what Sexy Time has. In fact, it probably won't be long until you start seeing some level 6 heroes from Sexy Time. It's just too much damage taken here from Albert. He couldn't afford to take this much damage, but he held out for a long time, but the bear's really coming through now. Only one upgrade for the bears, and that's armor, just to sort of keep them even longer in the game, pretty much. And they don't take too much damage, at least not when there's not strong heroes from Albert. I mean, if Albert had like level 4 to 5 Mountain King, he could start picking off bears one by one sort of thing. But at the moment, it's just not going to happen, because he's only got level 1 Storm Bolt. It's only, only going to be doing like 100 damage per hit, and 100 damage to 960 health ain't that much. Arcane Sanctum's being produced here at the expansion of Albert Einstein. And we can see one armor upgrade as well for the Spellbreakers. Trying to keep up with the bears, but not quite doing such a good job. Ah, the keep is going to take a lot of damage here. Full on focus here. This is Albert's time to shine. If he can keep that up and pick off some units, he might be able to get back into the game. But even so, that keep is going down way too quickly. Even if he could pick off another bear or two, he's not going to be able to save that keep. It's definitely going to go down. Does look like another bear is asking to get killed, though. A TP being used. Was that a Chimera? That was a Chimera. Depends how you want to call it. I would probably say Chimera because I like to call them Shims. I don't call them Chims. <laughs> but you could do. Whatever floats your boat, really. Tomato, tomato. So, we got three Shims. See, Shims. I just naturally say Shims. So, Chimera. I'll call them that. I think they're called Chimeras, but it feels wrong to call them Kims. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? You can't have... It's like double standards here. You've got to pick one and go for it. So, if I'm going to call them Shims, I've got to follow through, through and call them Chimeras. But that sounds wrong. So, Chimeras and Shims. Or... Shimeras and Kims. A bunch of Kims following Sexy Time's army. Oh my, this is just getting bigger and bigger. Look, it's a convoy. 92 food out of 100. 
Albert sitting on 54 out of 48. He actually needs to get another farm or at least this town hall back up, which is just about to get battered again. I wonder if these chimeras... I call them chimeras. I do. I'm confused. But they have got corrosive breath. And that is going to make short work of this town hall. Bears with the raw as well. Extra damage. Just too much. I think Albert doesn't want to leave because he just doesn't want to face defeat. Ah, Archmage does manage to hit level 4, so maybe Albert can turn this around. Warden being stunned, getting off a good fuck. Breath of Fire being used, level 6. About 5 mana away from an ultimate. About to see it in a moment, unless... Oh no, Shadow Strike wants to guarantee the kill. Blink as well, so didn't go for the ultimate. Which is sometimes a good choice, it depends what kind of game you're playing, I suppose. The ultimate for Night Elf can be a pain in the butt. And it also can be kind of crappy if it can be killed pretty easily. But I think it's a very strong ultimate for one versus one. But it's also quite hard to micromanage. Woo! A bit of smack talk from the players. But needless to say, I think the Night Elf army is rolling over. And there's only so much time Albert has left until every single building is gone. Yep, Star for Sanctuary and Star for Preservations are incredibly strong items in this game because Micro is pretty much the main focus of Warcraft 3 and denying your enemy experience is also a big part of it and Star for Preservation pretty much is a big part of both of those two aspects. So, yes, it is an insanely good item but hey, it's part of the Night Elf. And Night Elf don't really have any other good items, so I can kind of understand it. I'm not a big fan of Staff of Preservation just because of how strong it is, but when you look at the other Night Elf items that they have in the shop, they do get this sort of crap stuff compared to the other races. Orb of Corruption, Orb of Lightning, Healing Salves, you know, Clarity Potions, Sacrificial Skull, um, Skeletal Rods. Night Elf don't get that. They just pretty much get Staff of Preservation. They do get Clarity Potions, actually. I'll clarify on that. But apart from that, it is all about the Staff of Preservation. So Albert really is not happy here. And there's nothing he can do. He's just hoping that Sexy Time Discs at this point. Chimera's going to pretty much guarantee a successful siege of this base, although he can also just walk into it and breath of fire everything as well. It's up to him. He's going to do a bit of both. Fairy Dragons just putting down the DPS, but getting slaughtered by water elementals. The fairy magic that they withhold to stop. One Fairy Dragon still alive. Looking sexy as ever. Get in on that sexy, sexy fairy drop. Look at it. It's just such a good unit. It's a mate. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. Look at his little face. Oh, I want one as a pet. I so do. That's so good. Okay. <laughs> My obsession with fairy dragons needs to come to an end. It's unhealthy. It's got to the point where it's unhealthy. It was healthy before. It's like, yeah, you like fairy dragons. That's fine. But when you start to love them, that's when you might have crossed the line. Warden starting to chase down on the... Ooh, Archmage throwing down the invulnerability part. Stopping the Warden in her tracks because she was following there. But she can't attack some... Ooh, star for teleportation. Where's it going to take the Archmage? The raccoon sees all. He was in the game early on and he's still in it now. Okay, Archmage has snuck to a point where Sexy Time definitely isn't going to find it. I don't think anyone's going to bother trying to look down here. Let's face it. Oh, Town Hall. Up at the top. Sexy Time leaves. And Albert wins. Game over. GG. 102 units killed there for Sexy Time versus 39. I think that escalated after a point. Albert held his own. But he was never truly in the lead. Sexy Time had it. And he never let go. And then once he hit that point where the heroes just got level 4 each. And then up to level 5 each. You're talking two very powerful AoE abilities from those two heroes. Just slicing through human units. Because apart from Spellbreakers. The rest of those human units get picked off very easily. Which is the trouble with human. Is they are quite easy to pick off. 
So you've got to do your best to not get into that situation where you're faced versus two level five heroes that can fuck and breath of fire your brains out. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, then please subscribe, like and comment, thumbs up the video and I shall see you later.